Hello and welcome to another video. Um, in this video we'll be talking about how to recognize and set up um, a volume of revolution after you've been given a function to rotate about a line and you really don't know if you're supposed to use a disc or a washer. How do you know when it's a washer? Well, before we get into the particular question we're dealing with today, I will be playing with a bunch of functions here that I'm going to rotate about any point I like, and then we're going to decide whether it's a disc or a washer method that is most appropriate. And remember, the key to deciding is knowing whether you have just one radius or you have two radii. Let's do it. So let's start by asking ourselves, why do these functions not continue going down? Because that's where the secret of knowing if it's going to be a washer or if it's going to be a disc lies. This is it. You know, these functions are continuous functions, so they're supposed to keep going down. This is supposed to keep going up. This is supposed to keep going this way or this way, but they've been truncated by other lines. Now, the line that truncates, that truncates um, a function has a role to play in deciding if you're going to get a washer or a disc. Let's take these two examples. These are two functions facing different directions. Okay. So let's assume that this function was truncated by the line x equals 1 on this side. So you're going to have this here. So we're going to have a solid line here. And this was also truncated by the line, say, x equals negative 1, just to make things easy, okay? Um, like this. If this is rotated about the x-axis, what you're going to end up having is something that looks like this on the lower side, okay, like this, but it's going to be rotated. Let's make this look clean and artistic. Ooh, look at that. Now you're going to have this, but there's going to be a solid circle. So this is what you have. And on this side also, you're going to have something that looks like this. Okay? So you have rotated this. It becomes something like this. Look at that. When you rotate it, this is what you're going to have. But there's a hole in the middle of it. It was truncated. There's nothing stopping anything here. So whenever you travel from the center to the end, you will always get to the end, you get to the function. So when you get a cross section looking through the side, you will always get a disc that travels from the center all the way to the end. That's what you call a disc. Now let's change the circumstances surrounding this function. I want to use this one. Let's say that this was not truncated by lines x equals 1 and x equals 2. It was actually truncated by line say y equals 3 and that line runs this way so this cut this off so you now have a solid like this and you want to rotate this solid about let's say even the y-axis the x-axis rather say we want to repeat the same thing but it was cut off at that point or maybe about let's just let's 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 take let's make it smaller okay so let's make it smaller and then what you're going to have is take it closer okay so we can save some space so what you're going to have is going to be a reflection like this remember you always start with the reflection okay so you have that and then this is going to go this way but this is going to make a circle okay it's going to make a circle like that and this side is going to curve like this too. Okay, that was, that was not the best, but still acceptable. Now, do you see what you see there? This looks like 
like that. So that's the shape you've got. You've got the solid shape that is curved and there's a hole in the middle that goes all the way in. But remember on the inside, you had a solid line like that. You also had a solid line on the bottom too. So when you look inside, it is not hollow like this is hollow. It was blocked and that blocking cuts across everything. So when you have a circle, when you look at it from this side, what you see is actually from the outside, it looks complete, but on the inside, there's also another circle running round that was caused by this line making a revolution. Remember that when a straight line goes in a revolution, it cuts out a circle. So there are two circles that have been cut out. One was cut out by this curve and the other was cut out by this line. So there are two circles because there are two lines in the original shape that you had. That should help you establish um, whether it's a dish or a washer. I'm going to recap this just based on these two. I don't have to complete all of these, okay? I just wanted to have as many examples as possible. So remember that at the beginning for this one, you had this, this, and this. And you were, you were rotating this about this axis, okay? The only parts that were not, so these two lines were, were fixed, but this one was actually traveling okay making a radius the same but if you look at this one you had this part like this and it was traveling this part was traveling this part too was traveling so when you have two parts traveling around making a circle you're gonna have two radii and you must use a washer if you don't use a washer maybe you want to use the shell method which will be the subject of the next video I'm gonna make Okay, but for now you see why it's going to be a washer and we just want to know how to set it up. So look at this line. If you want to rotate this line about, say this, it's just going to be like this and then you rotate it. That's going to be a disc because there's only one line traveling. However, if you had something like this and this line went up and it was cut off by this line, okay? If this line was cut off by this line, then you have this line and this line will be traveling in this direction. And this is what you're going to have. You're going to have this. Okay. And then this is going to be on the inside, on the inside, solid like that. That's what you're going to have. And this is going to be like this. So that you have one radius reaching this line, the other radius reaching the outside, you're going to have two radii. And that's the general rule for this. Okay, so if, let me just give you one more example. Let's say that you have a function and this function was cut off by this line. Okay, and then you're rotating just this portion. Let's say this is, you're rotating just this portion here about this axis. Let's make, move it closer. You're rotating this. What happens is you're going to have a se second image and then you're going to rotate this end like this and you're going to rotate this bottom also, okay, like that, so that at the end you're going to have a shape that looks like this, but this part on the inside, okay, is going to be, I don't know if you see it, Okay, you're going to have a hole here, like that. So this is going to be a washer too, because there are two radii, one going from here to this end, and the other going all the way to this line, because there are two lines that moved, okay? This line, actually this line moved, but um, the radius is changing. There's a constant radius, and then there's a second one, okay? Actually, both lines moved. This line moved, this line also moved. Okay, so that's how you decided how many lines are moving in the revolution. If there are two lines moving, you're gonna have a washer. Now let's solve this problem, okay? I'm not gonna do the rest of it. We'll solve the problem and we'll be good. So what I wanna do is quickly sketch this. The line y equals one minus x squared is gonna look like this. I decided to spread out the x-axis just to make things more beautiful. 
beautiful. Okay, so, and this is the point y equals one. Well, this is line y equals two, and it is cut off by the line. So this is supposed to go all the way down, but if cut off by the x-axis, this is what we're gonna have. So this part is a solid portion like this. Now, what we need is to rotate this line about, about this shape, about the line y equals two. So we're gonna be rotating it about this line, which means that we're gonna have a reflection of it on this side, okay, like that, and like this, okay? Let's just assume that's good, and it's gonna be solid too. Okay, so let's rotate. So if we rotate this, uh, that's not the best image actually, but we're just gonna accept it as good, okay? So we're gonna have this, and this is gonna rotate like this. And we're gonna have this too, okay? So, so we're just gonna have a shape that looks like this. Okay, now this has to be solid, like solid shapes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so what you have there is the rotation you get, okay? And if you notice, if you look at it from the outside, it's a cylinder. And remember, a cylinder has a fixed radius, and that's the biggest radius you can get from this, from this end to this end, from the center to this end, will give you the biggest radius. But when you go inside, you notice that the radius is not consistent because the function itself does not have a consistent horizontal shape. And that function is this function. So you're dealing with two radii, and when you look at it, the cross-sectional area, when you sketch it, is going to be something like this. Um, you're going to have a shape that goes this way. Sorry, that's a straight line, or supposed to be a straight line. And then you have a shape that goes this way. When you draw a cross-sectional area to make what you have is that this part, remember this part too, will sweep a circle so it actually makes this. Okay, so that all of this is gonna create a washer. Okay, now what's important is what is the radius of this inside and what is the radius of the outside? We can easily establish the radius of the outside because it was this straight line that swept it, so we formed a cylinder on the outside. So we know the radius of that cylinder to just be the distance from the center here, which is, remember this was line y equals two, and this was the line y equals zero, okay? So the big radius that is consistent, we can start with that and say big radius or outside radius, okay, r equals two. We know it's gonna be two, the distance from here to here. What about the inside radius? Okay, which is small r, is gonna be the distance from two to the function. You can see, that's the distance from here to here. And what is this point? Well, we don't know, it depends on the function. And now that we have the function to be one minus x squared, well, let's even say we don't want to use y, y, one minus x squared, we just want to write y. It's possible you can say r equals um, two minus y. You can see why we're subtracting, because two is higher than the function, so it's two minus y that tells you the distance. However, should we write y or should we write one minus x squared? Let's answer one more question. When you look at the cross section, are you looking in the x direction or the y direction? Well, it looks like we're looking in the x direction. Well, if the disc faces the x direction, the thickness is in the dx. Okay, it has to be dx. That's the way you remember and you know that, okay, so I shouldn't be writing y then, I should just write one minus x squared. Okay, that was in the last video, I don't wanna dwell on it. Let's go. So, we'll change y now to the function which is one minus x squared. And with this established, we also know 
that the area of a washer is pi r squared, but we don't have one r, we have two r's, so it's gonna be pi, one of the r's, which is the bigger r, minus the smaller r. That's it, that's the area. And when we set up our volume, remember that our volume is the integral from a to b of the area multiplied by dx. Why do we know it's dx? We already decided that, that the thickness of this disc that we cut off that gave us a washer is gonna be in the x direction and we say it's dx. So now I'm just going to plug in all the numbers and let's start by simplifying this. Let, let's make this look better. So two minus one minus x squared, we know this will be the same thing as two minus one plus x squared, which is gonna be one plus x squared. So let's come back here and say that our volume will be equal to integral. Because we're integrating with respect to x, our boundaries are gonna be the ones provided by x, so it will be the x boundaries, negative one and one, so you have negative one and one, and this is gonna be, what's the area? It's pi times the big area, which is gonna be two, that's two squared, minus the small area, which is r squared. What's r now? r is one plus x squared. So we do one plus x squared, and we say dx. So that answer is actually 64 pi over 15. That's, there's something missing. Unit cubed. Don't forget to put the unit because you're calculating volume. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like this video and leave a positive comment in the comment section. Be subscribed if you're not subscribed. And watch out for the video on the shell, cylindrical shells, because again, that will save you from a lot of trouble in more complicated questions. Until then, don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.